Thank you very much, Joe. And what an incredible performance from Team Ice. They managed to bounce back, losing the first game. Bjergsen was able to, <laughs> to carry them through ultra rapid fire mode, but Bjergsen, next to non-existent on that Zed, he was in a lane matchup against Froggen's and Nivea. Got a fully stacked major, as Kobe said it himself. He's looking to complete the book. He wrote the book. At the end of the game, tier one boots. He had a Sunfire cape, a Warmogs, 20 stacks of Magi's now. As the only member of the old CLG run that's roster that's undefeated on Anivia, mm -hmm. why don't you give me some insight into Froggen's Anivia, Crepo? See, I used to play a lot of Anivia, and then I thought I knew the champion. But then there's some stuff Froggen does that uh, it's really it shows how much he masters that champion. Um, I just I just wrote them down in the list, so I'm just going to go over them real quick. First of all, there's the, what he calls a Telic port where he actually managed to teleport away in his egg out of like these tricky situations. Then, uh, when his spell usage, most people would use the stun, uh, the Q, proc it, wait until they see that it actually hits, and then use his E. No, Frogn is so confident that he's going to hit it. He sends out his Q. While it is flying, he will follow up with his E, and they will impact at roughly the same time for like a ginormous amount of damage. Then in this matchup, he put three points into Q when he had two points in, into E. So at level five, he had three points into Q, didn't do anything in the wall, so he's going for that wave clear. Just like these little things that he changes in every matchup, it just shows how smart he is. So matchups against Kasten, for example, he would run 15 AD just to harass him out of lane. And then when it comes to his build, yeah, it looks trolly, but that's after he succeeds because he started with the Chalice for Mana Region. He doesn't up for the tier anymore because he wants to build it eventually into an Athens for more CDR. Then he gets the Zonias because he needs that against the Zed. And once these items are complete and he's in full Froggen mode, <laughs> then there's the variation. I think the Warmux was a, a tribute to what his old tier Magi yeah. Warmux build. He should have probably gone random instead, but who am I to disagree with the king? <laughs> and then, yeah, the fact that he can get 20 stacks on his um, on his Magi just shows how good he is. And then the last point, and then I'm done ranting about Anivia, <laughs> is when he was chasing Lee Sin, he would place his wall, but he wouldn't fully block off uh, the path. He wouldn't completely block off the Lee Sin to prevent him from dashing over and going away. So he, he would do like a half wall block forcing the Lee Sin to change his path enough for the team to catch up and kill him. But in case the Lee Sin had flash or dash over the wall, Froggen still had a way to walk through and didn't have to burn his flash. So there's all these like tiny things that just show how much he masters his champion. It's amazing to see. It's sickening because <laughs> I'll never ever understand a champion <laughs> at that level. Yeah, honestly, I, I really enjoy the fact that as soon as Team Ice got cool, there's kind of a set bonus going on and they just got a whole lot better. So it just seems like everything's coming into place for these guys. Yeah, yeah, he was a really good Lee Sin. Completely yeah. agree. Now, uh, just before we talk about Cooler's highlight mad life in the early game, I felt like like, both of those players were moving around the map significantly. Madlife on Thresh, landing a ridiculous number of hooks. His flays were good. Some of the plays, not necessarily the most flashy, but he was always at the right place at the right time. I really felt like he roamed extensively and helped Ice out in that early game because double lift simply wasn't helping his team in the late game. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, that's true in a lot of these Korean supports. It's... Uh, Obviously, there's some dif differentiation between builds, but it's pretty common in Korea to go boots and mobility even still after the changes to the items. Uh, of course, you can get a little bit sooner now and then try and make plays around the map, try and get some deep wards and try and make plays on the mid lane. You don't usually see them going top lane. That was uh, he was, that was a, a bit different. AD carry. <laughs> he, he was, <laughs> yeah. It was an AD carry he forgot. He's like, oh, AD carry's top okay. lane. Yeah. But I thought it was the lane swap. And the one bottom lane was pretty useless. So <laughs> yeah. I had to go up there, as Kripa <laughs> said. But for Mad Life. I wish I'd written down some notes as well on him, but it's it would just say Mad Love is a god, and he always knows where to be in the right time, and with mobility boots, Korean supports, <laughs> gotta give him that. Talk about cool for a quick moment, uh, substituting in for Team Ice, because of course, uh, uh, Tame had to step away uh, due to some family issues, and of course, he really showed up. 10, 2, and 16 on Lee Sin. Not traditionally a jungler, but... His ganks were good, his his presence was good, he he was backing everybody up he needed to. I think this will be, just for him as a player, a big confidence booster as well. He had, uh, you know, he's been out of the competitive scene taking a break for a while now, and uh, in his last match in the LPL, he didn't perform up to his old standards, but he, man, he looked good, his mechanics were really on point tonight. Yeah, yeah you, you gotta consider, this is the sub for OMG, a team we're gonna be <laughs> seeing later on, right? Like, his replacement, Xiang, is, is ridiculously good, and uh, yeah, he was always in the right place at the right time. I kind of like the fact that he added a Warmogs and then uh, got a uh, Chain Vest as well. Like he, I feel like he was starting to mirror Froggen's build towards the end of the game. <laughs> I don't know if that was necessarily the case, but... It's because you know. it was so successful. It was. So we do actually have a replay of one of those uh, Tell Egg ports. Let's pull the fight up onto your screens. I think, Freak, uh, you wanted to talk us through this one and, uh, you know, the specifics. Uh, yeah, so let's go ahead and get the replay started here. This is uh, 11 and a half minutes in, so... 
Uh, no, like at which this point is, uh, we see double lift. Uh, getting caught, I believe. Oh, yeah, just he's killing double golems. Yeah. As a true AD carry, he's getting farm, which is very important for an AD carry here. I believe we were trying to show double getting caught, but the scene was so brutal and so gruesome for uh, Monte Cristo that we had to actually show that this double lift, in fact, can successfully do the golems. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That, that was just a, a, the. It was well played. Yeah. yeah. Well Congratulations. Played. Double lift was the PVE king of this match. <laughs> give a round of applause. So let's take a step back very quickly. This does put Team Ice now on four points to the two points of Team Fire. Both of the game modes that we've seen them playing a little more standard. Team Ice has. I'm going to call it out right. They've frankly stomped Team Fire. Does this mean Team Fire are panicking? I mean, you know, Monty, what do you think of the rotations in these impromptu <laughs> squads? <laughs> oh, they've been great. And uh, Team Ice, uh, we've talked a little bit about it. We've seen the players talk about it. They didn't really gel that first day. They didn't really practice. And Fire was tryharding. But ever since then, they, they really uh, seem to have made Ice keen for some revenge. So... However, there are still seven points left to be claimed in tomorrow's 1v1s, 2v2s, and of course we have the super 1v1 challenge that the fans voted for between Frog and Wei Shao. So nothing is 100% set, set in stone yet. However, if Madlife and Doublelift loses tomorrow in the 2v2 to Bjergsen and Diamond, it could be pretty embarrassing. It could be indeed. It will be embarrassing. It will be. Because yeah. we're going to be blaming you <laughs> the whole time. Yeah, why, why are you here? Hey, why are you not I, coaching Doublelift? Yeah, I can't <laughs> coach, man. I've been here the entire time. That, don't, don't make excuses. Don't make excuses. Priorities, man. Anyways, guys, we do have to take a very quick three and a half minute breather. But after the break, the games continue with our first best of three semifinal between Cloud9 and OMG. You can see they are gearing up. They are getting themselves ready. All-Stars 2014 continues right after this.